We're about to find out what it takes to become the ultimate cowboy. It's going to be big. He got to ride. Oh, yeah. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity that people don't get. It's going to take true grit. He got it. For me, I have no quit. I have the desire to win, and I won't quit until I make it to the top. 12 Cowboys from across the U.S. I got five generations of Florida Cracker Cowboy running through the veins in these arms. You ain't got to be big shot talking all the time. I like to have a good job. A man call himself a cowboy and ain't got no manners. Different backgrounds, traditions, and unique skills. This is how you break them and ride right here, cowboy. Men and women given the chance to win their American dream. I think I'm one of the top cowboys in America, and I'm out here to prove it. Their own herd, $50,000 worth of cattle, along with the buckle and the title of the ultimate cowboy. I'm looking for the one with the most passion, strongest drive. My whole life, the only thing I've ever wanted to do is keep my family ranch together. You're going to have to prove to me why you deserve to win this competition. Get that ambulance over here. It's about something real. All right, get ready. Here he comes. Close the gates. Close the gates. Get Hard work, determination, and chasing something a lot of people have given up on. It's the American dream. Cowboys are generally honest, hardworking people, and I think we need a lot more of that in America and the world today. Cowboys that don't pull their weight will be sent home. You're done here. Get your personals and hit the trail. Appreciate it. Who will win? The ultimate cowboy showdown. Today's move-in day. All of our cowboys are moving into the barn where they'll be staying during this competition. My name is Jared Lee. I was born and raised in Live Oak, Florida, fifth generation Florida Cracker Cowboy. My daddy packed me with him as I packed my children with me. I've been a ranch manager for the last six years, managing one of the largest cattle operations in the country. I've had to fight off personally alligators, water moccasins, skeeters, horn flies, horse flies, deer flies. I can rope, I can ride, and I got no back down, no quit. I'm the toughest and the best there is. Man, this place is beautiful. It's a big old barn. Old barn doors. I'm Ethan Treadwell from Frederick, Oklahoma. I ranch in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. I am the ranch owner, the boss man, head honcho, cow boss, whatever you'll call me, I'm the guy. Okay, hey, Ethan Treadwell. Good to meet you. Southwest Oklahoma, where are you from? I'm from Florida. The land of plenty, huh? As a cow boss, I'm gonna be very judgmental. I'm gonna look at these contestants as they come in, and I'm gonna size them up right there. I'm gonna find the weak ones, I'm gonna take them out. The strong ones, I'm gonna find their weaknesses and we'll take them out. I'm Jay Storm. I'm from Hampshire, Texas. I'm a fourth generation cattle rancher. I'm super excited to be here. I'm ready to prove that a cowgirl can do just as much as the boys. Like, I'm not gonna be the first one to go home, I promise. <laughs> My grandpa is 86 years old and he still works every single day. He's been my biggest inspiration in my family's operation. Like, I, that's my biggest dream is to keep it going. Like, I've been saving money for as long as I can remember. It would be amazing to win that prize. Like, that is more money than I make in a year, so it would be awesome. <laughs> God, we got a young lady here. Welcome, ma'am. And how do you do? Jay Storm. Ethan Treadwell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, ma'am. I see you're from the great state to the south of me. Hey, we're going to have a lady with us for the next few weeks. I'm thinking, yeah, heck yeah, this is going to be a good time. And I was so concerned that I was going to be sitting here in a freaking frat house with another bunch of 12 hairy, stinky, nasty guys. So how long was your, your journey up here? 
Uh, it was about 10 hours. Yeah. When Jay Storm arrived and Ethan flooded over the top of her, I felt like she was ready to put a boot in his butt and send him back to the barn. He's not following the cowboy code of throwing respect to ladies. I mean, all up in her face, all up in her space. Yeah, I, I employ like five people from Texas, and That's they all the think one. that is the greatest yeah. place in the world. So, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan comes off like he might get on my nerves before long just because he has such a strong personality. Oh, so, so welcome to the establishment here. My name's Quattro Houston. I'm from Divine, Texas. I'm what you call an everyday cowboy. I grew up on a working cattle ranch, and I also work at a feedlot. That being said, I'm a family man. I'm married to my wife, Megan. I have a daughter named Kelly who turns three in June, and those girls are the light of my life. I do everything for those girls. Winning the herd of cattle, it excites me like no other. It's something that we can hold on to. We can look back and say, do you remember when dad won this competition and won all these cows and where we started out and where we are now? Hello, sir. How are you? Ethan Treadwell. Quattro Houston, nice to meet no you. No kidding. Yes, Man, that's sir. like a Texas Quattro name Houston. if I ever yeah, heard it right well, there. That's where I'm from, deep down south. Yes, deep sir. down south. I'm Zane Runyon, I'm 40 years old. A lot of people would consider me a modern day cowboy because I don't get up in the morning and saddle a horse. I use four wheelers, side by sides, paraplanes, whatever, whatever it takes to get the job done and I get the job done. I'm here to win this thing. I'm at a crossroads in my life where the family ranch is being sold. I don't have a house to go back to, I don't have a ranch to go back to, but with this prize, I could start a ranch of my own. What's up, uh, sir? Not much, man. Welcome. How are y'all? Yeah, welcome to the Austin. Thank you. So I really can't wait to get in there and meet the other candidates. Jason. Zane. Jason. See where they're from, see what they're doing, what their operations are like. Zane Runyon. Go to Brewer. Ethan Treadwell. Yeah. Sir. Good to meet you. You know, I think I'll make a lot of good friends, but at the end of the day, I have no problem beating my new friends. Doc Holliday. Yes. Oh, oh Lord. Doc Cody Brewer. Hi there, man. Nice to meet you, sir. God almighty, old Doc Holliday's walking up here. Yeah, I, I was scared Daddy's gonna pull a gun. Yeah, he's like, make my day. Well, I trust you to make your hair late. Jared. I'm Hadley Hunting, and I've driven here from just outside of Ogden, Utah. I'm the type of cowboy that sends his work shirts and pants to the dry cleaner just so I feel like I can look my best. Y'all wanna move in, get something to drink? Hey, yeah, yeah. I like your yeah. style. It sounds great. Coffee. Look at this, they got my name on here and everything. Whee! Oh, wow. Look at that. I will be a monkey's good. uncle. Look oh, at that. Man. Who in here can actually cook? Me. I will grab corn fed. Okay. I, even, I even bring my apron. My name is Juan Carlos Villalpando. I am a fifth generation vaquero in the region of California, Baja California. And I'm a saddle maker, I'm a welder, and I'm a rancher. I live in my family ranch for almost four years. And how long has your family been involved in that? Five generations. Five generations, yeah, that's in awesome. Yeah, in the border. And my family got the ranch in the 30s, so it's really important to keep as a part of the culture, and it's been really rough just trying to find a way to keep it in the family, and that's the reason I'm here. I've been to uh, Chihuahua and Hermosillo, Sonora. I got invited for uh, Crooked Horns production. Oh, Crooked Horns, Cuerno uh, Chicos. Yeah, they uh, paid for me to come down there and ride. I'm Cody Brewer, I'm from a small town called Rickman, Tennessee, and I'm a professional bull rider. I'm a cowboy from Monday to Friday, and then I fly out and I'm a bull rider after that, so I'm a cowboy for five days and a bull rider for two. I've had two facial reconstructive surgeries. My right eye socket's metal, my chin's metal, and I have metal braces on each of my jaws. I've broken my left leg in two places, shattered my right shoulder blade, and um, I've never set out over 30 days. Wow, that's insane. Are you in pain? I got a broken rib right now. I got stepped on last Friday. I just didn't tell anybody because I didn't want to freaking out. Yeah, all right, if I sit down? Sure, I ain't sitting What was your name again? Cole. Cole, where are you yep. from, Cole? North Dakota. When I left home, it was it was 31 degrees and snowing when I left on the way down here. So I mean, no dry heat, no wet heat, it was cold. Every single day, no matter what, we're fixing fence, we're making hay, we're out there pushing snow because we got six feet of it on the ground. Yesterday, it was about 65 and sunny. Today, it's about 30 degrees and snowing. It's just a different lifestyle up there. Have we opened this door, though? No, I don't think anybody's gone in there. 
I don't feel like we go in this room. I work at a feed yard where I take care of 80,000 head of cattle every single day of the year. Oh, look at there. This is nicer than my house. <laughs> I'm punchy, I'm rough around the edges, and I do the same thing that any male can do. Man. What's up, Ted? Pull a chair up, honey. Hey, hey, hey. You gonna sit right here? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think this man was meant to be a bachelor. This yeah. man right here. I actually, I had one of my guys, he quit me. I was like, why are you quitting? He's like, honestly, this is a single man's operation. And that <laughs> offended me. I was like, what's that what mean? The more that Ethan talks, the more that he shows that he's not a legitimate cowboy because he's a pencil pusher. He's used to telling people what to do. And he won't get away with telling me what to do. To me, when I see a fake, it's a slap in the face. Woo, pull up the chair. <laughs> Coming up on the Ultimate Cowboy Showdown. You're gonna have to prove to me why you deserve to win this competition. I'm looking for the one with the most passion. Oh, come on up, ah. Grit. Ah. Strongest drive. Get it set up to come from this all way. All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead. It's a way of life. And later, two of you gonna be going home because I'm the boss on this deal. That's just how it is. I've been listening to Trace Atkins since I was like knee high to a grasshopper. Not only is this contest the coolest thing ever, you throw Trace Atkins into the equation, it's gonna be great. Gentlemen, ladies. Oh goodness, meeting Trace Atkins. Super fangirl status right here. I have idolized all his country music growing up and seeing him in person is so surreal. And oh my goodness, he is so tall. He is such a large man in person, and it just made him even more intimidating. Welcome to the Ultimate Cowboy Showdown. This is why you're here. You've been chosen from across the United States because you all have different traditions, different styles, and you're excellent at what you do. But you're gonna have to prove to me why you deserve to win this competition. Now, I'm not just looking for the most talented cowboy, I'm looking for the one with the most passion, grit, strongest drive, because we all know being a cowboy is a lot more than just wrangling cattle. It's a way of life. It's about respect, dignity. It's about the American dream. Now, as we go along, some of you will be unsaddling and going home. And at the end of this competition, one of you will be taking home a herd of cattle worth $50,000. This $50,000 worth of cattle would mean so much to me. I. I've wanted nothing more than to raise cattle on my own and do that full time as my career. And this would be a huge impact on my life. No more living paycheck to paycheck. I'm also gonna be calling on experts from across the country to help me make these final decisions. Right over here is Brett Dalrymple. He owns this ranch and he's asking for you to earn your keep. I've got a barn I'm building over there. So part of y'all's keep here. I want you to finish out my barn for me that I started. My son, Dakota, He's around here somewhere. He'll be heading up that project, so he'll be giving you instructions on what to do and how to do it. The last thing I expected today was that we'd have to build a barn. You know, I was thinking more cow work, more horse work, but if that's what we gotta do, then I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna work hard and I'm gonna do it. So tomorrow morning, you'll be saddling your horses and heading to your first challenge. So start building and earning your keep on this ranch, and I'll see you in the morning. First thing we're gonna do is lay the baseboards. I've got three anchors laid out, so we're gonna take some of these two befores, anchor them down. Second thing we're gonna do, start at the top and work at the bottom. Yes, sir. Long or short? Long. Long. Right. Yes, pardon me. Oh, thank you. I'm Derek Lacasa. I'm from Toll House, California. I rode bulls professionally for six years, and then I made the transition into being one of Hollywood's leading Western stuntmen. Some of those Western stunts you might have seen in Magnificent Seven, The Lone Ranger, Django Unchained, and uh, Cowboys and Aliens, 310 to Yuma. All right, DC. Hey. Hey. Oh. What do you look like? 
dead on it, player. What's up, y'all? I'm Jason Davis. I'm from Washington, D.C., urban cowboy. But hey, I've been around horses my whole entire life. You know, my dad got me riding horses when I was three years old. My grandmother and my cousin down in North Carolina both have ranches where they raise black Angus cows. Everything that has to do with ranch life, I learned it from this. This ladder a little shaky. I ain't want to try to crawl up here with the, with the board and me and the ladder go. <laughs> I've competed professionally in rodeos. People are like, where's this guy coming from? What, what is he, the comedy act? And then I get out there and they're like, yo, this guy can really ride. So it doesn't matter where you're from. You can be whatever you want to be out here. Look at me. I turned out to be a great cowboy. I saw Tara using the saw. You can take one glance and see that they don't really are comfortable. I'm not saying that I, I would say that they've never ran a saw before, but not much. Just run it, just run it through nice and smooth. There you go. There you go. You want me to run the saw for a minute? Sure, if you want to, go for it. He seems to think a woman is not capable of using power tools because he took the saw from me. I'm very familiar with the saw. That's why I picked to be like the saw operator, a skill saw. That's something I'm good with. Oh, so that's not my 22. That's my 22. What's this line? No, this that's one, an old that's line? Old, yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be just right as long as it busts up right, you know? Well, it's pretty exciting to get here and uh, finally meet everyone and uh, see how each one's personality and where they came from and how they've been ranching and cowboying. And they're like, we got a lot of different cultures right here, so it's really neat listening and learning to everyone and uh, seeing how they do life. I didn't choose this life, this life chose me. Just a small town hand make his dreams come true. <laughs> Quattro irritates my soul. His mouth runs too much, and anybody that's always talking is probably doing less riding than they are talking. Woo! Yeah! Yes! That's what we're talking about, Kevin. It was that extension cord. He probably pulled the groin. We're here to win. And you know, you're not winning, you're losing. So we can't all be best friends. You know what being a cowboy is? It's getting the job done no matter what it takes. It takes you three loops to catch that cow. It takes you three loops. Don't quit. I'm curious what's in store for the whole competition. I have no clue if it's going to be roping tomorrow, if we're going to be building stuff. Whatever it is, throw it at me. Um, I'll be ready for it come morning. Coming up. Y'all be sure to communicate. A little more pressure, Cody? I know what I'm doing. You just worry about what you're doing. He just never shuts up. Yep, 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 yep. Let me work the gate. You stand out I'm good on this gate. How quickly a good plan can fall apart. Oh, God, God, God. Oh. And later, if you lose, the onus is going to be on you. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, you can see these pens here are empty. Out there in that field are your cows. 50 of them with blue tags. Together, they're worth somewhere around $50,000. First challenge is sorting them and rounding them up. They're mixed in with a bunch of other cattle. You're going to cut the blue tags out, get them back in these pens. Now, to do this, we separated you into two teams. Now, the six of you on my left, you're in the red team. The six of you on my right, you're in the yellow team. Each team will have an hour. You can cut them out any way you choose in the open field, or you can use the portable corral. But the only cattle allowed through the gate to these pens are the blue tags. Now, that rawhide portable corral will also be going home with the ultimate cowboy at the end of this competition. These corrals are as handy as they come and as handy as they get. So that's awesome. That's, that's just icing on the cake. And to help me judge this challenge, we have two expert cattlemen, the owner of TS Cattle, Buddy Schnaufer, and then the former president of the Alabama Cattlemen's Association, Mr. Chuck Tice. If you're on the winning team, you'll be safe from elimination. If you're on the losing team, in our eyes, you'll be in jeopardy. Yellow team, you'll be rounding up your cattle first. So get in the saddle. All right, yellow team, you ready? 
We're ready. Yes, sir. Three, two, one. One hour. Let's go check the pen. We want to go ahead and open this blue gate, because that's where we're pinning them at, right? Where we just came in is the only way to bring these cattle in. I stepped into the role at first as far as being the leader. I wanted to kind of get us a game plan on what we needed to do, because I'm really good at reading cattle. Y'all be sure to communicate. Talk to each other. If you're in a bind, let somebody know. Our strategy for the yellow team is to gather the whole entire herd and push them toward the pin and then sort the blues off from the yellow and get the blues to migrated to the corrals. What we're gonna do is bring all the cattle. We're gonna get them over here as calm and as easy as we can. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Looks like to me, Quattro's kind of taking the lead on this thing. Just scatter around. Go left, go left, come on. You're good, Tara. Let's just get him up into a ball and let him sit for a second. A little more pressure, Cody. I know what I'm doing. You just worry about what you're doing. Quattro, he wants to take command and order on everything. He just never shuts up. Yip, 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 yip. So everybody just keep him tight. Keep him tight. Go, go, go. Come on. Looks like they've done a good job so far. Good job, guys. We're going to let all the blue tags go back out in the pasture. Everything else stays. Hey, do y'all want to stick them across so that way we have the safety? We can get two people on a the gate? They talked about that other pen. I don't know if they're going to put the blue tags over where the yellow tags over. I don't think they've quite figured out yet exactly what it is they want to do. No, they haven't. We're going to bring you blue tags and they come out. Hey, I can read a near tag. That's how you, I understand <laughs> now. This is, co this is communication yeah, skill. Yeah, I got you. I'd say Quattro and myself are a little different because Quattro is really talkative and really loud, and I'm not. Main thing is, just don't get excited. You get excited, and everything's excited. Hey, fellas, let's have a time out. I want you two horseback, and as the cattle come out, y'all keep them balled up and wait for all the herd. We need to be on horseback to push the blue tags where they need to go, to be honest. Yeah. But apparently, my communication doesn't matter. Quattro is taking charge, and for some reason, he does not want to use the cowboy's biggest asset, which is your horse. We got one blue tag coming. Uh, here, Let's try not to send one at a time. We'll have the cattle out everywhere. You got you to gotta come out of your gate. You can't stand in your gate. Let me work the gate. You stand out I'm here with I'm good me. on this gate. Since Crazy blues. idea, but why do we have somebody on horseback run the gate and somebody on horseback move the cows? One blue tag, one blue tag, one blue tag. You behind, don't worry about it. They're getting them watered up there. They're just going to get ringier and ringier on them. Yeah, grab, grab this in case the blue comes, uh, Cody. All right. It'll be easier. No, that's going to be too, too jacked up, Cody. Don't worry about fine. that. Let's try it real quick. One yellow. Ah! That's what I'm saying. The two gate. Just leave your gate closed, please. Just listen to me. Quattro, don't try to make it look like I don't know what I'm doing to make yourself look good. That just that rubs me the wrong way. It's OK. It's OK. It is a total wreck right now. There are cows going everywhere. And I don't know if it's because I'm a female or what it is, but I'm over here like, guys. We need to be on horseback. I'm not getting on foot in a pen with cattle. I don't like getting ran over by cows. That's why God made a horse. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Hop, hop. Please let me try. They're bringing that girl in here now. She gonna and they, they might her. handle a lot better with that horse. They I mean, might. Most... Calm them down. Are you my out man? Yep. You're my in man. In. Making progress now. Yes, sir. Tara's doing a great job sending their blue tags out and keeping the yellow tags they don't need in the other pen. The girl, there you go, Tara. Keep it going. I kind of do this every day. Boys, sometimes you got to let a woman work. Up, 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 up. Let the yellow one peel back, and this is it, guys. We are done with the blue. Right there, right there, right there. Right there. Right there. Big white space. Looks like they're going to get them out right there. There it is. They've got them out. All right, everybody get on your horse and let's go. Tara is getting us the yellows and the blues. Now it's time for us to leave the yellows in the pin and get out there to the blues and push the blues to the other pin where we finish the job. Y'all just let them be easy. Good job. Let them see the hole, be the hole, and they'll too. go. As soon as they go through, last cowboy through, y'all get them double gates closed so nothing breaks back out in the pasture. All right, everybody kind of get up at a trot and ride up. Somebody grab me the other gate, please. Yes, sir. Everybody go that way. Hey, here's another blue gate. Get it set up to come from this way. All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to set the gates up. Y'all finish pushing the channel. Come on, buddy. Easy, easy, easy. Here, we're going to have to raise our hand. Throw your hand up, Vince. Woo! 
Now time. Time. High five right here. Hey. Thank you, everybody. You gotta work with what you got. You gotta work with what you got, man. Coming up. Jared, get over here a little closer to this corner. Hey, I'm trying to work with you, but you gotta quit being boss man out here. Hey, man, I'm I've had just as many cattle as you have. He's having a hard time to bowing down to my leadership. Cole looks like he's way behind right there. All right. Top hand right there, cost him the whole thing. We're the red team. We've got me, Jared Lee, Cole, Jay Storm, Hadley, and Jason. So we're gonna sort this herd of cattle up and get our blue tags out of there and take them back down to the pens. We can win this, I have a feeling. It's not, not gonna be a problem. This is what we do every day. All right, in three, two, one, the clock starts now. Let's go up there and spread those pens out. I think we can get them in there pretty easy. I am the ranch owner, so I'm taking control. I'm trying to take the lead on this deal, because I, I, this, this is my jam, man. Come on, guys, go ahead and trot around in big circle. I ain't trying to get fast on these yearlings, man. Jerry Lee, come over here, come over here. I'm good, buddy, I promise. Well, there's a big hole in between us. I know there is. Slow down, cowboy, slow down, fellas. Slow down, slow down. Come on, guys, that's why you going fast and in a hurry. We got a sweet, smooth, nice drift and drive going. And Ethan's up in the front trying to guide, but instead of guiding, he gets to trying to pull on his horse. He's done let his adrenaline get over his thinking part. Slow down, everybody, slow down. Now they're gonna have to settle them. Trying to get a little ringy, they just need to sit right there for a minute, in my opinion. Nobody get too punchy out here. Everybody keep it slow. They're gonna put too much pressure on them there. We had the cattle right up to the pen instantly. I mean, one one blew out, and of course, with them yearlings, once one blows out, they all just scatter. And there, yeah, there's a few people on our team that, that are pretty upset that we should have slowed way down, but that's the name of the game. There you go, we'll take them to the corner. I say take them to them pens. I don't know if we'll ever hold them there. You want to take them to the corner? Yeah, take them to the corner and try. Instead of continuing with our game plan, which was to put them in them pens and get our sorting done, Ethan starts yelling out, let's take them to the corner. Once again, Ethan gets to trying to be too fast, too hard, too much cowboy, trying to be superstar. All right, now everybody get in there, line up from this corner to that over there. We'll sort the yellow ones out, we'll hold the blue ones up. Jared, get over here if we're close to this corner. Hey, I'm trying to work with you, but you gotta quit being boss man out here. Hey, man, I'm telling I'm... you, I've had just as many cattle as you have. Well, I know you have, I know you have, fast man. jerking, there's what calls him to run. Jared Lee's giving me a little bit of pushback. He's having a hard time bowing down to my leadership. There's old cowboy hero, top hand right there, costing the whole thing. Cole looks like he's way behind right there. He's got a big old gap right there now. He needs to get on up there around the herd a little bit. Push him back in, push him back in. Good job, good job, good job. Cole turned his horse's butt to the cow again. That's a big no-no. I ain't never seen a horse's eyes on his butt yet. Like Jay Storm just made a nice cut there. It is working really, really well, really well. They've already got nine yellow tags off of their cattle. Hey, girls. Hey, girls. Well, they better regroup here and slow down. Looks like they got two or three blues coming out here. Yeah, go back around them. We're gonna have to pin them. Got them kind of kind of scattered everywhere. How quickly a good plan can fall apart. <laughs> we got a little too tight on them, a little too fast. We needed to give them a little more room, and they broke past us. Uh, we kind of all lost our mind in the, we got to be fast. And you know, that never, never works. Jason, right up here, a little closer to me, please. I believe they got them looking at the hole now this time, boys. Get on in there and get your gates. Good job, boys, good job. They weren't able to sort the cattle out in the pasture, but they were finally able to get them pinned. Now they have to get them sorted and fast because the clock's ticking. Hey, I'd leave them on this side and strip them the other way. You go the other way? Oh, yeah, leave them like this. I have a pen like this. I do it all the time, I promise. Ow! Look, like Ethan just got kicked pretty good. How about wise and pens? Well, they didn't put the jacks down on it. Looks like Jared Lee's gonna try to get it pushed back over. 
Jason just out there holding the horses. Y'all bring me everything that's not blue. I'll cut off what's blue and leave it in here. Atta girl. Hear that girl think? She just told him. Hey, I got this, Kate. I got this. I feel like I took the lead a little bit. I mean, there's definitely louder voices than me, but like I know I'm pretty experienced with this. I know how to do it the right way. Yeah, they're gonna let the yellow cattle go. They're gonna try to hold their blues. That's, that's plum different. The other strategy was they let the blues out. This team is letting the yellows out. I told you I can work. I might not talk, but I can work. Jason just standing there holding horses. He's gotta drop them horses. He's not being any help. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Hey, yellow, 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 come on. Come on. Hey. Sorting the cattle is going way smoother for them than it did for the other team. They're making up some good time. Look, look. Everybody mount up. So many skates. Right. Looks like they're going to work for them right here, guys. Kept them separate. They got them moved. He's here, double set of gates. Look it around. Yep. Everybody in here, everybody in here. Okay, All right, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. In here. Good. Time. Time. Time, right there. Good job, good job. Great work, team, great work. Yeah. I really don't know who won, but I know we did a good time. I know we probably around, probably about 40, 45 minutes maybe. So we just gonna have to stand by and see if our 45, 40 minutes was great enough to get it done. All right. Red team, yellow team, good cowboy. You got your cows sorted, and they are your cows. Throughout the rest of this competition, you're gonna have to tend those cows. You're gonna have to feed them, keep them healthy, but at the end, only one of you is gonna take them home. All right, so I got a lot to discuss with our two expert judges, Buddy and Chuck. There will be an elimination tonight. Two of you from the losing team will be going home. I'll see you in the arena at sundown. Man, I'm just worried that we may not have got it done fast enough. If I go home tonight, I'm going to be devastated. And what about them sending two home instead of yeah. one? No kidding. I was shocked that was about kind of that, a... man. It's going to be two out of six. The losing team loses uh, so a third. six people and two are going home. That's going to be sketchy. Going into tonight, I'm very nervous. We don't know who won. I, and I'm sure as, as well as my other Cowboys, are gonna be shaking in our boots wondering who is the judge gonna pick to go? Not just one, but two of us. Coming up, two of you gonna be going home. Nervous? I just took it upon myself to get a strategy going for my team. I really wanted to smack him half the time. I think Jared missed the cattle on the first shot going to the pen. Why'd you do that? I'm pretty nervous about tonight. Two people going home, that's a lot. I, I mean, I really hope it's not from our team. I've been pretty nervous this whole time. Like, this isn't really my, it's way out of my comfort zone. You know, your heart kind of falls down in your stomach. You're like, man, I drove all the way out here to do this. I may be going home. I'm definitely excited to see people go. It's time to separate the men from the boys, and there's definitely a few boys in the crowd. There are 12 Cowboys here. Two of them will be sent home. And the judges, I'm taking their advice, but in the end, it's up to me. Trace Atkins rides in. Seems to be a really nice guy, but he's pretty intimidating. I, I can't stress that enough. Good evening. Good evening. How are y'all? Good. Good. Nervous? Yes. I enjoyed myself today watching y'all cowboy. Had a good time. I didn't have any pressure. I'm sure y'all didn't feel exactly the same way, but let's get to business. We started out this morning with the yellow team first. So, Quattro. I noticed that at the very beginning, you kind of got out there in a leadership kind of role. Everybody just keep them tight. Keep them tight. A little more pressure, Cody. Cattle come out, y'all keep them balled up and wait for all the herd. Let me work the gate. You stand out I'm here with good him. on this gate. Is that something that y'all talked about, or did you just take that on yourself and just do it? I just took it upon myself to get a strategy going for my team and started it off. Why'd you do that? I'm a social person, and uh, I don't mind being a leader. If you lose, 
the onus is going to be on you. Everybody's going to look at you. Yes, sir. You're yeah. exactly right. As long as you know that going in. How do some of you other guys feel about Quattro stepping out there and taking the leadership role? I really wanted to smack him half the time, to be honest with you. But we had a job to do, so I kept my mouth shut and tried to stay focused. Quattro, what you think about what Cody had to say? I did take charge. Nobody else really said anything. There was a little bit of tension. I feel like it was because of the cattle. They were kind of waspy, you know. We'd get them going one way, then they'd blow back, and I, feel, I felt like that was our tension uh, uh, for the group. All right, well, let's talk to the red team. Ethan. Yes, sir. You decided you were going to be the leader. Was that something y'all talked about? No, sir, we didn't have much time to talk about it. You know, I employ several guys, and that's, that's just kind of the position that I took. Y'all's strategy was to get them in the little smaller pen and then cut them out in the chute, which was different from what the yellow team did. Let me just uh, ask you, Quattro, how do you think your team did? I think we did really good once we got the rhythm going. You have any idea what your time was? No, sir. If I was going to put a time on it, I'd say 40 to 45 minutes right there. Ethan, how do you think you did? Our time probably wasn't as good as it should have been, but we could have hit them on the first shot, man. We would have had that deal. I mean, it worked fantastic together. It all went well. We got it done. I don't disagree with anything you said, but you were a little slower. They came in at 41 minutes. Red team came in at 46. So yellow team, you're safe. Go sit on the fence. It was great to know that we won. That elimination round, it was, it was intense. I was uh, really shaking in my boots until we got the go that we were the winning team and got to sit on that fence, and that took a whole lot of weight off my shoulders. All right, red team, six of you left. Two of you going to be going home. Before our two experts, Buddy and Chuck, left today, I asked them if there was one standout that you thought was an all-star today, who would that be? And they both said without hesitation that it was Jay Storm. So Jay Storm, you go over and sit on the fence. Jay Storm, she gets the job done. She's impressive. I mean, not many girls can go out there on a horse and handle cattle by themselves like she does. And she has a lot of horsemanship, whether she wants to admit it or not. That was like a huge relief, but still like sitting on the fence and watching them, that was really hard. Like, you know, I, I, I didn't really think any of them deserved to go, go home. So now, now there's five of us left. Two of you gonna be going home. Ethan, I'm gonna say the same thing to you that I said to Quattro a while ago. You know the burden that comes when you put yourself out there, you know? So you still feel pretty confident about everything? So now, now there's five of us left. Two of you going home. Ethan, I'm gonna say the same thing to you that I said to Quattro a while ago. You know the burden that comes when you put yourself out there, you know? So you still feel pretty confident about everything? I think you step up in the leadership role like you live your life. You do what you do. We just got a bad set of cattle, but we're cowboys. And when we were asked to do a job, we did the job. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you this, Ethan. If you had to pick somebody that you might say didn't do as good as you would have wanted him to, who would it be? I think Jared missed the cattle on the first shot going to the pen. We ah. missed them on the first shot. They kind of blew through on the other well, side. Well, they blew by you, but that's all that matters. They blew by the corner. And who was sitting on the corner? You flushed some cattle out of there because you got impatient trying to take roll and trying to be in the spotlight. That's what happened out there. There was five people on a team and a one-man team up there. And that's what happened. I'm just the only one that'll speak up and say it. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you what I observed once y'all got those cows in the pen. Ethan, there's some good cowboy and go sit on the fence. All right, so now there are four of you out here, two of you going home. Cole, Buddy, and Chuck kind of noticed when you were trying to work the cows that your horse kept getting kind of turned around on you. Uh, you work cows with that horse a lot? Or? I do. I mean, it's a it's a different environment down here. The ground's different. He's never seen this red dirt before, and 
honestly, he's, he's a skittish horse when it comes to dirt mounds and stuff like that. Jason, why didn't you tie them horses off? My horse, I've never tied him around cows with a pin like that. And I didn't want him to pull away, break the reins, and then, you know, he'd been gone, I'd have been without a horse. What'd you think about that, Jerry? I think there was more than enough that was needed handling them cattle in the pen. Jason, when them, me and him, when the panels got lifted, we went over to get them panels down. I mean, there's only so much you can do outside the pens to help. Y'all did some really good cowboying, but you did take too much time, and that's just how it is. So I guess we've come to this point. Um, like I said, this is, this is hard for me to do, but um, Cole and Jason, appreciate it. This is the end of the trail for y'all. I'm afraid you're done. Collect your personal. I thought Cole was pretty handy, and uh, I think he uh, got sent home just a little too early. To be honest with you, there's a dang sure a few more here that uh, could be home before Cole. Cole and Jason. We lost them, which I ultimately feel like Jared, he's the reason why Jason and Cole are gone. You make a mistake, own up to it. And he made mistakes. Losing this first round sucks. Losing this chance of having this herd of cows financially would have helped me out phenomenally, but it ain't gonna slow me down. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I got a beautiful wife and kid waiting for me at home and this was a bonus in life. And you know what, I didn't get it. It ain't gonna slow me down. Getting eliminated early sucks. Losing out on the herd, that sucks also. But guess what? These men and these women are 100% born and bred cowboys, cowgirls of America. I tip my hat to all of them. Let the best man or woman win. All right, that was a good first day. I'm just gonna say, uh, this may not always be 100% fair because I'm the boss on this deal. And if I don't like you, you ain't gonna stay around long enough to soften up a chew of tobacco. But get yourself some rest tonight. Congratulations on all of you making it through the first day. I'll see you in the morning, Cowboys. Here we go. Chop, chop.